um, which, which is quite interesting. Let's let's look at a another another video now. We're going to be looking at the popularity of the chosen on national television, and it looks like we're getting good reception, which is good because at the end of the day, Jesus. Jesus made a couple of different commandments of us, and it's go and make more disciples. And you may think that that's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Like right now, what I'm doing is that if you shared this, that's doing that maybe for somebody um, or sharing some content of another creator. It doesn't have to be me. Um, There's a lot of different ways. And, you know, what God talks about a lot in the Bible is that we we're all a, a part of of this you know the head the arms the tail and no part is more important or less important you may see people more or less but I mean behind some of the biggest churches um, that do some of the biggest things and I'm not talking about like because they're big as in mega I'm talking about as far as impact there are donors behind that and they make those there you never see their face they're never up on the pulpit um, and they're happy at moving that kingdom. So everybody plays their part in spreading the gospel. And so for this to be received well in a time where there's certain things that they, they're okay with our faith and they, they want it for us to have a well reception, for people to be searching for God, for all of these major celebrities to be saved, what you could say that it's working towards the greater good. Of course, there's people that are looking at other people and saying, well, sometimes it's it's harmful for um, the church. I would say, you know, you're just watching people live life and find God publicly, and sometimes they're going to fail. Sometimes they're going to fall off. I don't know if you've ever been on a walk with Jesus. Maybe you got saved and you've just been 100% since that day and you've never backslidden. You don't have uh, a gray area where you were falling off and you needed to get right. And for you guys, great. And write a book about it and write how you've done that and share that with other people so other people could get that as well. But if you have had some times where you know you could have did better Um, or you should have did better and you knew better or or whatever the case may be in that spiritual warfare or that backslidden state, um, you know what it's like. And so a lot of times what you'll see happen in the church, and we're kind of going, we're not really going off topic, we're just kind of expounding on the topic. A lot of times what you'll see in the church is that um, people will say, see, I told you, see, I told you, but look at your life and imagine it being on a major screen and them seeing everything you said. Maybe you got angry and said something. Maybe you felt a certain type of way. I remember a pastor told us once that he went to the movie theater and he was with his wife And someone was, you know, they're being a little bit loud. And uh, he asked if they could be quiet. And um, he kind of disrespected his wife and him. And he was, you know, kind of upset about that and wanted to do something about that. And thought like, wow, look at my position where I'm at. This could damage and hurt the church. And he was able to calm himself down. Now let him have had a a moment of, you know, where he w- didn't wasn't able to have that self control and had things had escalated and he ends up fighting and whatever how that would look. The last trailer we were watching is mercy and justice, grace and justice, and I believe a lot of times just searching. Just searching from my notes, I mean, just looking at the comments on my new YouTube channel and watching this grow, um, I made a decision in the beginning that I'm going to do this as if something that I want to watch and something I want to enjoy. And if there are people that are like-minded and think like me, then they're going to follow along. And if there's people that aren't or they want to complain, bicker, or over-discuss or debate, 
that that's not what God has blessed me with to be really great at debating, nor do I want to. Uh, it seems more like a headache. But I understand for the people that are, uh, because I do know people that are really good at that. And I think that's great. And God bless them. Take a look at some of these people and how the general public is responding to the Chosen series coming out. And it looks like we're being well received. And I think that is a positive thing. So let's check it out. It is on its way to becoming one of the most popular TV series of all time with a fan base all over the world. We are talking about The Chosen. Here's a look. You Pharisees. You cleanse the outside of a cup and the dish, and then you eat and drink food. Heated. Mm. Joining us from this much talked about show, the actors Jonathan Rumi, who plays Jesus, as you see there, and Elizabeth Tavish, who portrays Mary Magdalene. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. both for being morning. here. Thanks Congrats on the popularity yes. of the show. Thank you. It's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. It's wild. We were just talking in the break. I have to know, do you guys feel this added pressure playing these enormous characters, Jesus and Mary Magdalene? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I think I felt the pressure pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, and then after after a little bit of reflection, I, I realized that uh, I'm here playing this role for a reason. You know, I think God put me in this position for a very specific reason. Absolutely. Jonathan Rumi has an incredible spotlight on him. Um, so, you know, everybody's looking for him to say, see, told you um, to discredit him. But what they got to remember at the end of the day is he's not Jesus. He's playing Jesus. And he doesn't want people to think he's Jesus. He just wants to play Jesus in a way that you could kind of see how Jesus would have acted back then. Let's let's keep watching. And so I have to accept that and um, and just do the best I can with the, with the gifts and talents I've been given. Mm -hmm. There you how go. About you, Elizabeth. Well, I feel like the writers have created these really relatable characters. Right. You know, we meet all these disciples and the followers of Jesus before they meet him. So they're very human, very flawed mm -hmm. um, when we first meet. Remember that the disciples were very human and very flawed. We all are. There was a point in time where I thought my pastor didn't sin. Like he never sinned. And I was like, how do you get there? Um, and then you start reading some of these verses. Uh, why do I do what I don't want to do, et cetera? you start realizing that we are all flawed and that that's why we need God and we need Jesus and and we needed Jesus to do what he did to come on earth and live a perfect life and die for our sins. Let's keep watching. Meet Mary Magdalene. She is struggling with uh, PTSD, with trauma, with Ooh. addiction. And so just reading that first episode, I'm like, well, this is just, this is a character. This is somebody relatable that I relate to. Um, so the the pressure of it being this historical figure is a little lessened because of that. Mm -hmm. And four seasons later, how have your characters evolved? If that's the first time yeah. you meet Mary Magdalene, <laughs> quite I mean, a bit. Yeah. Very different. She goes from the, sort of the lowest point of despair to uh, redeemed, changed, mm -hmm. transformed. She also shows a very realistic portrayal of growth, mm -hmm. where it's sort of two steps forward, one step back, and and this constant process of growth. That's right constant process of growth if you've just recently became saved and you're trying to live up to somebody else next to you who may have been saved for 10 years or someone who may have been saved the same time and they're you know you're comparing yourself to them don't um yes uh, you, you just compare yourself to god and try to be an imitator of jesus christ and that's a high bar if you try to do better than you did the day before that's a good gradual and if you fall down get back up that's important and that's what she's going over here i i really like that oh and we see her now she's she's quite good yes <laughs> it's, it's it's an amazing story obviously one of, one of the best stories you're pulling from the bible you're relatable and you're aspirational so you kind of have the best of both worlds mm. people are obviously interested in the characters mary magdalene and jesus but now fans are really interested in you guys <laughs> as people how mm. has that been you know, fame is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it gets you certain benefits in, in, in society, and, and other times you have uh, unexpected encounters with people that are super passionate about the show, and um, some of them are more appropriately timed encounters than others. 
Um, but at the end of the day, I think you just have to, you know, uh, just be present with people and have grace and kindness. And, and when people are sort of occasionally overstepping boundaries of space, um, you just try to gently let them know that, you know, I'm, I'm, Je I'm Jonathan, I'm not Jesus. So, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of need my own sort of space as a person, as a human being. Even Jesus needed space. That's why he... He went off to pray by himself so often because mm -hmm. he was swarmed by people. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's something that in a, in a, a sort of a, 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 a microcosm, I'm beginning to... That's something that we don't think about a lot is that these actors, there are people out there that there's an unhealthy uh, relationship with fame and actors and the roles they play. Uh, sometimes we really are... Um, I kind of idolizing them in a way I, I don't think that um, and there's I think there's now that I'm saying the word idolize they were saying that uh, there's some people that think that the chosen is idolatry and um, I think anything can become idolatry in a way and I think that comes down to your heart I mean I think ice cream could become idolatry food um, uh, your your girlfriend uh, your boyfriend your your job your car uh, your money um, uh, and all those things at the same time could be great and blessings from God. And they can all, you know, that comes down to the human heart, the condition and, and your spiritual maturity and you knowing the difference between right and wrong, having a bit of spiritual common sense, I would call it. So I can totally see him having a deal with that. And look, you know, there's this, this happens in, in Hollywood, quite often so i can understand them trying to navigate through those waters trying to show those people grace and mercy and also needing to be at some points like hey you guys need to chill out let's keep watching understand why he needed to do the things he did why mm -hmm. he needed to, to to be by himself so much because it's it's uh, it can be a lot to mm -hmm. to kind of try to be with everybody that you meet you know right. to both there's another point, too, is that I never thought of. See, and this is why I like Chosen, because it opens this dialogue about the Bible that we never thought before. Like, did you ever think, like, Jesus, at the end of the day, have you ever been somewhere, uh, you know, me coming from business and having to, you know, manage people, meet with different people, meet with different clients, things like that. It could be a bit overwhelming, and you're just going from, like, one, or even, like, a teacher, because you imagine one student to the next, and Jesus is changing people's eternal perspective, going from one to one to one. And he is subject to the body and the stresses of the body and the limitations of the body to a degree where he gets tired and he's exhausted and he's just like, I just need a mental break. I mean, we never have really looked at Jesus being needing a moment from that to kind of decompress to and and what's cool about jesus is when he does decompress he 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 goes and prays to the father and he's praying and he's taking that time that quietness and a lot of us in america and in the world we look for that quietness and bundle it up and yoga meditation this and that where the bible speaks on uh, meditate uh, before anybody, you know, even started knowing about meditation. Because a lot of times meditation comes off. I'm trying to pull up a verse right now for you guys. Let me take a look here. Psalms. Oh, I'm going to go to Psalms. My favorite Psalm. And that's why I know meditation is in the Bible, is because I'm going to read you my favorite Psalm right now. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So Jesus was for sure meditating in God's law. He was meditating in prayer. And that just means to kind of you just sit there in the moment Um a lot of times uh, there's a lot of different definitions of meditation i don't have i've looked this up in the concordance uh the hebrew language and kind of looked at what that word exactly means and 
I mean, meditation is just spending that time and, and that focus kind of solely on that and kind of calming everything else around you, shutting it off, turning it off, and spending that time. So Jesus, you know, is is living this perfect life. And what you can see in this perfect life is Jesus going to take time to rest. And I think that that's why I like this chosen because we're starting these new conversations that people thought they needed to get through the secret or some, uh, some guy at the gym that teaches yoga, that's going to teach you how to meditate. Um, but really God shows us examples where he would go and pray and rest. Um, and he was under extreme stress and a- a extreme attack because what he was going to do was going to change everything forever. So let's keep watching. I just think that that's interesting as we're learning about Jesus and the chosen and it helps me put things into a different look through a different lens because when you're kind of looking at Jesus, you're able to see different angles and you're trying to get like this full spectrum of, a buildable spectrum on who Jesus is and what he did. And we only have, you know, our word, of, you know, we only have the word of God and which is great. That's all we need. But what we're saying is we have the word of God and it only tells us so much. And when we get these different ideas from just keeping the conversation going, uh, we're able to build and and see things and help us out in our own life. So let's keep watching. Both of you pull from your own religious experiences? I certainly do. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, for, for me, when we first meet Mary, she's she's not religious. <laughs> um, and when I booked this show, I, I was uh, in a very sort of cynical, I had a very cynical attitude about religion um, and, and was just, you know, kind of, searching for something but not knowing where to find it and then booking it and playing this role as she's grown I feel like I have also grown and I get to, to witness these stories and and who Jesus was what he was really teaching in live action you know in in the present moment so it's it's been pretty transformative and reminding me of who Jesus really was oh, wow well, yeah. we, we know the, the look at that now she didn't say if she was saved or not uh, not really sure what that is but Imagine where you were in your walk, you know, and God's reaching her heart. I'm just thinking about how good God is. <laughs> where he appoints this woman to a role and it changes her faith and affects her faith. And and God's knocking on that door of her heart and through her being a part of this, being a part of the body of the chosen, they're able to bring Jesus to people on the screen who may have not been able to get through the King James Version. Maybe they, you know, they picked the first time they picked up a Bible, they picked up the NKJV, and they were just trying to really understand this kind of just the supplements, those that are maybe not great reader. Like me, I'm a really good reader. I've been reading since I was little. Um, a lot because I would get in trouble and I'd be grounded and I would read as well, you know, whatever. My daughter, um, who is nine, you know, when she reads the Bible, I say, you know, do you understand? And she says it's kind of harder to understand for her. She doesn't understand the concepts or why this or that. So we'll have to take very small chunks of that Bible. And she's above her grade reading level. And still with that, we'll have to take very small chunks of the Bible. And what we'll do is we'll break them down together, go over them, explain them. And yeah, we don't go through a ton of the Bible, but she knows the most important parts. And then the parts that we're going through, we understand. So I really like, again, how this is really helping everybody involved, even the the actors. The stories from the Bible are, are obviously deep. This season is going to take an even deeper tone. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of guide us into that, Jonathan? Yeah, I think uh, we start to see the beginning of the end mm-hmm. of Jesus's ministry on earth mm-hmm. and, and how he gets to that point, how we get to the inevitable crucifixion. Um, there's, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of scenarios that 
set up his fate uh, as sort of um, you know meted out by by the local authorities the religious authorities and the Roman authorities so I think he knows he has to escalate his mission and the 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 pub the publicity of his mission um, which includes his followers and and how that affects the uh, the authorities is essentially what we see in season four the the, the tension increasing, the authorities uh, clashing with his disciples, the disciples clashing with each other, jockeying for power and, and, uh, and, and status and position. So uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting series. How do you? I agree. I, I'm super excited. I was set and primed to see this when it first came out. I just didn't want to go by myself. So just waiting for my wife and my kid. I want to be able to have the perfect uh, scenario and go and watch this. And I'm okay with waiting a little bit. Definitely, if I could see any movie, because my wife was like, we haven't been to the movies in a while. I was like, this is the movie I want to go see. Uh, hopefully, my daughter will sit through it, or let's keep listening. Prepare for that episode. Um, well, I mean, the whole season was was something that was really challenging for all of us as actors to to, to do this. This uh, this particular season was, was pretty challenging. Yeah. There's there's so much emotion. There's, uh, there's a lot of sorrow. There's a lot of grief. And I, I think each of us experienced the challenge of this season in our own way. Very cool. I know you guys aren't the characters, but I have goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> sitting right? here with you guys. You're fantastic. Jonathan, Elizabeth, thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Of course. So that happens a lot um, where they mention like they have goosebumps, they feel like this or that, and uh, some people feel um, they don't like that at all. I think as long as people are being respectful and, you know, you could feel how you want to feel about that. I, I don't, like she said, I know you're not Jesus. I know that you guys are just actors. She's like, I just have kind of uh, goosebumps, and that happens with fame and stuff like that.